I don't know what's wrong with me. I was perfectly fine until I talked to them. Suddenly, I feel like this heavy weight, this heaviness is over me. I was not feeling depressed. I wasn't feeling down. I was perfectly fine until I talked to them. How to protect yourself from negative energy and from negative spirits of other people. But first, like and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. We have to be mindful of the type of negative energy and the wicked spirits that we are taking in when we interact with other people. There are some people that carry a spirit of heaviness. They carry a spirit of negativity. They carry a spirit of wickedness and evil. There are some people who are so pessimistic, so down, so depressing, that they want to spread that misery around to other people. And if you're not careful, you will let that spirit get on you. When you are a woman who is trying to do better for herself, when you are trying to keep a positive outlook, when you are trying to keep an upbeat countenance where you might not feel the best, but you're trying to see the positive in life, you're trying to keep yourself motivated, you're trying to stay spiritually grounded, that is when those negative spirits, that negative energy will come to attack you the most. See, what you have to understand is that when people don't have anything going on for themselves in life, they want to come along and distract you from your purpose. And if you're not careful, you will allow them to do that with their negatives talking, with their negative way of being, with their attitudes, with the little slick remarks they say to you. The more you engage with people like that and the more you entertain that spirit, the more it gets on you. So as a woman, as a wise woman, it would be who of you to be mindful of the company that you keep. Bad company corrupts good habits. That's the way I believe. And what that means is that when you are around somebody who is negative, somebody who's miserable, somebody who's angry, you stay around them long enough. If you're around people who like to stir up problems and drama and do horrible things and like to make other people feel miserable, there's only a matter of time before you start doing the same thing or start feeling the same way. That's the reason why, for me, I'm really mindful of the things that I watch on TV. Even though the interaction is not in person, when it comes to our form of entertainment and the things that we watch and the things that we listen to, all of that stuff feeds our spirit. And what you feed yourself is going to show on the outside. It's equivalent to somebody who constantly eats junk food. They constantly eat sugar. They constantly eat all kinds of things that are not necessarily good for them on a consistent basis. The more they do that, it will show up in their skin and it will show up in their health and their organs. And they understand and they don't understand why they're feeling the way they feel. Well, it's because you fed yourself a bunch of junk over time. Now your skin is not as beautiful as it could be. It's the same way with your spirit. When you feed your spirit negativity with the people that you interact with, you are going to make yourself be just as miserable as them. People who are miserable, they want to spread that around in the form of doubt, in the form of negativity, the way they talk. These are not the people that you want to confide in. And I see too often women who have toxic friends, toxic family, and they're constantly running to them, telling them all of their business, be it good, bad. You run to them and tell them all your business and you wonder why your situations are not getting better. It's because you're confiding in snakes. You're confiding in people who are not trustworthy. And that's why it's important to keep a lot of your life private. A private life is a happy life. And when you realize that, no matter how excited you might be about whatever's happening in your life, if you want to see those blessings continue, if you want to see that positive outcome continue, you become more mindful of the people with which you choose to share your good news. Because everybody doesn't have your best interests at heart. I know that should go without saying, but a lot of people don't understand that. And when you have people who have negative spirits or people who are toxic and they're accustomed to dealing with toxic people, they will try to tell you that, oh, she don't mean no harm. I like the people who 
try to come along and clean up the negative thing that somebody just said. Like, um, I had a situation a long time ago where a girl, I forgot exactly what she said, but she said something smart and I caught it and I called it out. And her friend said, no, she didn't mean it that way. What she was saying, I said, I know exactly what she was saying. You don't have to try to come along and clean it up. I knew what she was saying. And I forget exactly what she was saying, but it was something slick. You know how us women do sometimes. We like to say little slick things as in hopes that nobody will catch on to what we're saying. And then when somebody calls you out on it, then you get like, oh, I didn't mean it that way. I didn't mean that. Negative people mean exactly what they say. You have to understand that, especially if it is their character to be negative and to be nasty and have that wicked spirit. I'm not talking about one-off situations where you might have an argument with someone or somebody's in their feelings in the moment because of a situation. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who have a character of misery and toxicity and negativity. I'm talking about people who find joy in being bitter and wicked and like they say, raining on other people's parade. Those are the people you really have to watch yourself around. Those are the people who have given up on life, essentially, the way I see it. When you have no hope, then, and when you feel like you have nothing to lose, people who feel like they have nothing to lose are the most dangerous individuals to be around. I take a lot of public transportation as far as the trains. So I overhear a lot of conversations. I hear people waiting on the train, talking on the phone, talking about how, you know, I don't care about that. I'm not afraid to go to jail. I'm not afraid of this. I don't give a F about them kids. I don't care about this. I don't care about that. I hear that so much. And it's sad that people have this mindset that their life is so miserable, so destroyed. They have no hope where they feel like they don't care about anything. And when you have people who constantly talk that way, those are not the people you want to be around. People who have nothing to lose. If you are a woman, if you're a person in general, but I speak to women, if you're a woman who wants to do more for her life, you want to be physically well, mentally well, spiritually well, you want to be financially prosperous, you want to see your life go in an upward trajectory, you cannot be around people who have a nothing to lose mentality. Because if they have a nothing to lose mentality, they will make sure that you lose everything. And when you hang around those people is no matter how cool you might think it is, because when you're in your 20s, being around people who have this like, hey, I don't care about this. I don't care about that. I wish he would. I wish he would mentality that might seem cute in your 20s. But as you get into your 30s, 40s and so on, you will realize that you can't be around people who can, you know, just fight at the drop of a hat or start arguments or stir up drama and conflicts, people who skip out on their responsibilities. You just don't have time for that as you grow as a woman. And when you really understand your priorities, that's another thing. People who are wicked and negative, they do not have priorities. They do not prioritize their life. They just kind of float along doing whatever comes and, you know, if they do this, maybe they will, maybe they won't. Maybe they're very like up and down in their emotions. They're up and down in what they want in life. They don't really have a clear understanding of what they want to do or what they want to be in life. And I'm not saying that everybody's going to have it all figured out. But as a grown person, a person over their 30s, especially once you hit over 40, you should have some idea of how you want your life to go and the type of lifestyle you want to live. But when you're dealing with negative, toxic, pessimistic people, people like that really don't think about how their life is going. They just flow along and do whatever feels right. And if what they do that feels right to them hurts you, it doesn't matter. If what they say, see, these are the people that say whatever pops into their mind. They have no filter. They have no, you know, I'm just going to say whatever comes to my mind, whatever. Look, I don't hold back nothing. That's cute when you are in your teens and early 20s. But as a woman, it's not becoming to say whatever pops into your mind. Whatever pops into your mind does not have to come out of your mouth. Once you are over the age of 30 and 40 and so on, that whole just, I'm going to speak my mind, 
that gets real tacky and real ghetto and negative toxic people are that I'm a speak my mind bunch of people. And sometimes they speak their mind when nobody asks them. And that's when their negativity and toxicity becomes really venomous and it can be hurtful and harmful to your growth as a woman. When you surround yourself with people who just constantly have to speak their mind about speak, speak their mind, their opinion matters to them only in every situation. That is not helpful. That is harmful to you. And you do not want to surround yourself with people who do not know how to control their words. So what can you do to protect yourself from negative, miserable, toxic people? Number one, you can limit your interaction with them or cut off interaction with them. For me, I cannot stand to be around someone who doesn't know how to control their words or doesn't know when to hold back their opinion. For me, I have that mindset that if I didn't ask you, then I really don't need to hear this. Now, it's not that I'm not open to criticism or I'm not open to having a discussion, but you all know some of the women who just like to say things at the wrong time, especially when something great is happening for you and they want to just throw a wrench in there because they're a little bit jealous or a little bit envious. You could be doing something so great. You could have put down a down payment on an office space because you're about to open up a business and they feel like that's the right time to tell you. Well, you know, um, which McCall and them, they just lost their property up the street because they wasn't getting any business. Sis, do you really think that was the right time for you to tell me or the right thing for you to tell me like while I'm putting a, de a deposit down on an office building, you want to tell me about how somebody else's business flopped? The little slick negative things that sometimes jealous, miserable, negative people say. So you really want to limit your interaction with those kind of people. If you know they're a negative person, if you know they're an angry person, they just wake up angry for no reason. Those are not the people you really want to deal with, especially on a day-to-day -day basis. And some of your family members, some of our family members might be that way. I had an old manager where she was just that way. She was very negative all the time, even to the point where it sounded like she had a growl. Like when she generally spoke, it sounds like she was growling, like barking. And I hate to refer to a woman as barking, but you have some women who are so angry, so miserable, when they speak, it almost sounds like a bark, like a whoop, whoop, whoop. Like, like they literally sound that way when they're talking. She was so bitter, so miserable all the time. Me, when I tried my best to still be upbeat, her energy, her negative energy was so overwhelming. And at that time, I wasn't as grounded as I am. Look, I'm being renewed day by day, but I wasn't as grounded spiritually as I am now. Her negative energy, her negative spirit would weigh so heavy on me. After an eight hour shift, I was completely like, I just, this cloud is over me. God, break this, please. In the name of Jesus, break this off of me. Because I was in that environment with that negative, pessimistic, just negative for no reason spirit all day long. And then once I got out of that situation, I told myself, I don't want to be surrounded by people like that, money or no money. It's not worth it to be in an environment with people who are negative. And while the way I believe we are to be light in a dark place and I, my light shines, I feel like I even have a handle called living light because I try to be light in the world. But the reality is, is that sometimes people and their negativity and the things that we go through is just so heavy that the best thing we can do other than letting God help us is to remove ourselves from that situation. Like even if you're the most spiritual person, you don't have to willingly submit yourself to a negative person and be in that negative toxic energy if you don't have to. And I decided I don't have to. So limiting your interactions with people who are negative and miserable and not allowing them to put that negative energy and spirit all over you because I'm telling you, this is real and they will mess you up if you let them. Number two, be mindful of the programs and the things that you are watching and reading. I am not the kind of woman who can sit here and watch 
horror movies and all these different kind of things. If that's your form of entertainment, do that. That's fine. But for me, I just cannot go to sleep at the end of the night, letting that be the last thing that I saw. I can't read books that have too many scary details or too much graphic, you know, things because it's just not good for me. And then just not the scary things, also the things that make us look horrible as women. I don't like a lot of reality TV. The only reality show that I watched for a little while was Basketball Wives. And I mainly watched that because I like their style. If I watched any reality shows, I watched them. I watched the Braxtons. Um, I saw clips of Real Housewives of Atlanta and all that. But it's because I like their style of clothing, their hair, the way they dress. Some of them, how they like just flow and carry themselves. But their lives were messy. And I don't want to mimic that behavior. I don't want them. And this is where your mindset and mastering your mindset comes in. You have to be mindful that you don't allow what you see on net on TV, because even though it's entertainment, it can still be very negative for your life. If you allow what people are doing on TV to influence your life, your real life, that can be negative and have a negative outlook for you. So let's say you see someone on TV where they're living this lavish life and all of a sudden you get down and depressed about your real life. You're not a multimillionaire. You're not a real housewife. Your husband is not this or that. It's not that you can't draw inspiration from these people, but let's be real. A lot of what they're doing and how they got to where they are, they got there through very messy, negative, wicked circumstances. And if you allow their fake reality as in reality TV, to influence your real life or try to influence your real life, you will never be content and you will always feel down about your life because you're looking at something that's not real. See, that's a lot of the problem with society today, in my opinion, is that we value the fake over the real. And when people don't understand the difference between the two, you set yourself up for a lot of disappointment, frustration, and uneasiness in real life. So don't allow what you see on TV to make you discontented with your real life. Because even though they might say it's entertainment, if it's posing a real life problem for you, that is considered negative and toxic and you need to leave it alone. And for me, a lot of the things that's on TV right now, some people ask me about different shows. Have you seen this show? Have you seen that show? I focus on things that are, if it's not making me money, if it's not feeding my spirit, and if it's not time with friends and family, I really don't partake in a lot of just idle, just watching random TV shows. Like, I just don't. I like to watch documentaries. Yes, that makes me a nerd. I don't care. But I like watching a lot of documentaries, things where I can learn. I watch a lot of YouTube, keep watching YouTube. I like to watch, you know, this is the fall season. So I'll watch things about, you know, I love this channel called, um, I'm not going to say her name, but she does all fall type of videos. I love it. I watch things that feed my girl and feed my spirit and feed my wallet. It <laughs> gives me, um, not my wallet, but my purse. I watch things that build me up financially, mentally, physically, and spiritually. So as women, especially as feminine wise women, we need to be mindful of just watching things that are going to feed us in a positive way. So the number two way to protect yourself from negative wicked spirits is to be mindful of the things that you're not just taking in in person, but also on TV. And then the last way that you can protect yourself from negative, wicked, toxic people is by keeping your business to yourself. Stop confiding in people who are negative, who are wicked, who mean you no good. Read the room. See, the issue with a lot of ladies today, in my opinion, is that they're very beautiful, they're very educated, but they lack wisdom. When you lack wisdom, you will confide in people who do not have your best interests at heart. You will confide in people who can easily trick you into believing they're for you when they're against you. That's where being a woman of wisdom comes in. No matter how cute you are, no matter how much money, how much education, if you have knowledge without wisdom, you will not know when to apply that knowledge and when to not apply it. You have to understand feeling. You have to understand intuition. You have to understand when something just doesn't feel right. A college degree cannot tell you when something doesn't feel right. 
college degree can help you make a lot more money, but it cannot help you to read people. That has to be something intrinsic. That has to be something on the inside of you that knows when you're in the presence of a snake or a negative person and know how to act accordingly. Wisdom is a vital, essential part of being a woman. Everybody talks about being a high value woman. To ultimately be high value for me is to have a relationship with God. And when you have that relationship, you have wisdom. No matter how cute, and I know I keep saying this, but you really have to understand, your cute is not going to protect you. You should look cute, be cute, be kind, be gentle, be all of that. But don't be naive, be wise so that you can protect yourself. Because as women, we deal with a lot of negative, jealous, wicked spirits. And especially if you are a woman who might be, you know, doing things on your own or you have a very busy life. During those moments, that's when people can easily try to get over on you because you're so distracted with the mundane, everything's everyday life that you don't realize that this person, they're always causing issues. When I'm around this person, I just don't feel right. I don't understand why. It's a spirit. I'm telling you, it's a negative, wicked spirit. And we have to be mindful to not allow negative people and their negative way of being and their negative spirit to wipe off on us. So ladies, have wisdom and protect yourself from negative energy and the wicked spirits of other people. All right? Like and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. If you watch this video until the very end, my loyal subscribers, put the high hill emoji in the comment section. I absolutely love to see it. Take care.